Hi. Um, yeah, I'm walking home because I decided I had enough drinks that I probably should walk home. And uh, I stopped drinking a while ago, but still, you know, better safe than sorry. So, anyway, I was figured I'd add another couple bullet points and use this time as I walk. So, um, another couple bullet points of my philosophy are, of course, that I'm skeptical and I'm relativistic. And I call my philosophy uh, relativistic skepticism to give it a unique name, <clears throat> uh, insofar as it's unique, you know, and you might want to call it by a unique name. But I do intend for it to simply be relativistic and skeptical. And so first, skeptical, skepticism is the idea, you know, that it's a, it's a questioning philosophy. It's a philosophy of questions. Now, the, the interesting thing for, um, you know, to start off with, I think, is that the word skeptical does not come from the, you know, the Greek word to doubt or anything like that. It comes from the word to reflect, to keep thinking about things to think that there's always an open question, and this is what so offends the dogmatists, that they characterize it as a philosophy that's all about doubt. It is not all about doubt. Um, one feature of it is that it believes there's always more questions, that there is always doubt. But that's just one characteristic of it. You know, the rest of the time, it has a lot of uh, assertive things to say about appearances and whether you accept appearances and, and so on. So the skeptical principle is really the principle that every question leads to another question. And I personally believe that there is no such thing really as an answer. There, a good answer gives you more questions and in fact is a question. Um, but we, in grammatically in language, can state in the, the form of an answer. But again, if it's a really good answer, it gives you enough understanding that you have new questions which you have to answer. Now, relativism is uh, the kind of idea. It's uh, sort of subtle, it's for fine lines, but you know, it follows from the idea that how and should. Uh, some person be in a privileged location or have access to a privileged frame of reference from which they make arguments which are incontrovertible. And the answer is physically no. There is no such point of view. Now you can make arguments that are more or less incontrovertible um, from within a particular reference frame. You can do all of the things to, in our lives to understand, that, hey, that guy did the crime. You, know, you can narrow down on facts. But still, all of those facts are relative. Now, relativism and skepticism, these are, you know, attractive ideas to me. I'd be willing to admit that maybe it's within the nature to appreciate them. But I would say that my analytic reason for believing in relativism and skepticism uh, all draw on my basic uh, characteristic of being a natural philosopher. This is what natural philosophy has arrived at. Uh, to understand nature, you should be skeptical and assume you don't have all the information. Even in a world where it's potentially possible to get uh, full information. You don't have it. So even people with non-skeptical philosophies find that they have to adopt the skeptical approach to knowledge. Uh, and as far as relativism, that's really the principle by which you get around the skeptical limitation. You can't know something in and of itself. You know, that's part of skepticism not in and of itself, but you can invent a criteria and you can compare two bits of knowledge based on their, you know, correspondence to that criteria. All right. So relativism is how we add knowledge to our, you know, knowledge base. And 
underneath the skeptical requirement.